Without much further ado, one of the other big controversies is uh, timing of surgery. So just last night we had a number of cases which were very um, contingent on making a timely decision to intervene or not to intervene. And again, it's a great pleasure to have Tim McHenry back here again. He wrote a landmark paper in JBGS, which is still quoted widely, on early intervention and pulmonary deterioration. And so we thought that all these years later, we'd invite him back to see what has changed and if this dogma of early intervention being safe and saving lives holds true or not. So thanks, Tim. Oh, thanks, Jens. Yeah, so that was a while ago, and, and I won't actually touch on that paper much. Um, some in the second talk, actually, but um, um, start with the, with the case. So no disclosures. Um, so this is a, a patient I recently took care of. A 24-year-old uh, motorcycle collision versus a tractor trailer. So increasingly sort of common in our area with the increased traffic patterns, but initially very unstable and with a, with a, with hypotension, I uh, underwent a massive transfusion protocol, a lot of blood was given, uh, exploratory laparotomy, just vascular leg, contaminated degloving injury that underwent a, a X fix for a damage control procedure, um, underwent, uh, uh, the abdomen was left open, uh, had bilateral chest tubes inserted, had uh, uh, small arachnoid hemorrhages and, and was unresponsive but intubated. Initial labs were significant uh, 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 for a base deficit that was increasing after initial presentation within, within an hour and these are being serially checked, serum lactate increasing as well. So from a spine standpoint, this was the injury. So in kind of an unusual pattern. And, and, and it was, um, and I think it speaks really to the high energy uh, of, the inter of the injury. And, and what I decided this was, was a, was a congenital fusion that had been, had a three column injury through. And, and, and so I thought that was unusual also because that's sort of not where you'd expect that, in, that, that force to go through, right? Something that's already fused. But, um, uh, and then another thing that was, was, was found was had a grade three left vertebral artery injury. Uh, which was an occlusion, and you can see that on that CT angiogram. <coughs> so very sick um, uh, and, and, and not stable to go to the operating room um, until uh, post-injury day, post, post day six. And so, so that's what I did on post-injury day number six. And at this point, didn't have an exam. Um, still um, 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 wasn't, uh, wasn't moving its extremities and really not not, not uh, uh, awake or examinable. And so I would consider this, you know, in my hands, a damage control, and this certainly wasn't my definitive surgery, but this was a damage control um, um, surgery at this point. And uh, continued to maintain him until two weeks when he had improved uh, that I could take him back to surgery and, and position him prone and, and do that. Um, the, um, um, you know, some of the things in between that I think is important to, to sort of uh, have a plan for these patients is, and we talked about this yesterday, sort of touched on it with some of the case presentations, is, you know, what's happening nursing-wise, what's happening um, 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 other care-wise in between. And one of the things I did with this patient was, and I don't have x-rays from it, but I put him in Gardner-Wells tongs in addition to keeping him in a hard collar. And, um, and, and, Part of the reason I did that was it's a marker for, the, for, for everybody in the hospital that this is a significant injury. We have a lot of patients in hard collars, you know, in very, you know, because they haven't been cleared or they haven't, you know, there, there's other things going on, but this was very unstable. So put them in Gardner Wells Tongs. I couldn't put them in very much weight because of the, you know, and it really ended up being five pounds because anything more than that distracted them. So you got to be careful of that as well. At um, three months, though, here's his exam. And, and so he's, he, he, he ended up recovering significantly, uh, head injury improved, and, um, um, and, he, and he has preservation of function and, and presumably will improve from here, although this is still, this is, he's about four months out now. So that's where we're at. Um, not tested on the left because he had a traumatic BKA, so. So, you know, the things that, 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 that we think about with, with, with timing of surgical stabilization is there's different variables that we consider, and, and, and a lot of them interplay, and some of them will push you earlier, some of them will push you later, and, 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 and it really depends on um, um, 
considering all those factors. So, you know, neurologic recovery pushes towards earlier surgery in some instances, and that's what we see. But, um, and non-neurological non outcomes also push towards uh, earlier surgery, but sometimes it pushes towards delayed surgery if the treatment they're getting, heparization or something, makes surgery uh, uh, not something you can do at that point. And then, is early surgery safe? And again, it depends. It depends on these other factors. It depends on, on, on really the, the, the complete global picture, picture of their injury pattern. So studies that have been done, the Staska study uh, uh, is quoted a lot, it's quoted in our institution um, um, as a, as a, as a uh, reason to do earlier surgery less than 24 hours. But, but like the, the, some of the discussion Dr. Herbert uh, just, just went through, you know, when you look at the data, there are some problems with some of these studies. And, and one of the problems with this was that, was that um, when, you, when you looked at the recovery of, of, of patients that had surgery less than 24 hours, they, there was statistical significance that they would recover two Asia grades, but not one Asia grade, and that's one of the one of the uh, uh, um, uh, problems with the study. And it turns out the reason for that was that there was a, a disparity in the initial Asia grade in patient A between the earlier and late surgery groups. The earlier surgery groups had a lower Asia score and were younger, so they had the they had they were they had more potential to recover. So, so they recovered, there, were, there was more recovery of two Asia grades, but there wasn't more recovery of one Asia grade. It just, just doesn't make a lot of sense for a, an effect of earlier surgery, unfortunately. So then another study was done, another Canadian study, a uh, uh, multi-center uh, study that showed that the earlier surgery, less than 24 hours on incomplete injuries, improved the Asia motor score by 6.3 points. And, and, and that a subgroup analysis of Asia A, that patients with lower ISS, a cervical level injury, and compression or burst pattern injury uh, were the ones that tended to recover better or get more of an effect. Um, one of the issues with this is what does a Asia motor score of 6.3 mean functionally for a patient? We don't really know. I mean, you know, not, unfortunately, probably in a lot of instances, not a lot. And then what, Going through the literature, there is a push for even earlier surgery, uh, and there's and there, but these are all small studies, heterogeneous groups of patients, mixing cervical, thoracic injuries, um, incomplete, complete. But there's a lot of studies coming out that are small studies that are tr trying to demonstrate that even earlier surgery, less than eight hours, has a has a positive effect on recovery. But I would say they're inconclusive. They're, they're, the data is just not um, 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 fully supported. So one of the factors that that that, that has become increasingly uh, uh, apparent and 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 important for our trauma colleagues has been vertebral artery injuries, and and so that's the grading system. And and most of the ones we see are grade one and grade two. Um, but the clinical implications is that if it's a carotid injury, which isn't as, as, as correlative with spinal injuries, that the, that the stroke rate increases with the increasing rate. But in vertebral artery injuries, that's not true. The, the, the stroke rate does not seem to increase with increasing grade. So that's, that's one point to, to understand with that. The, uh, um, at, our, at our institution, we have, like I mentioned this last night, a neurologist and a neurosurgeon, and this is what they do. This is their primary scope of practice is, is, um, is, is dealing with, with strokes and, and, and arterial injuries, and, and they do a lot of um, um, treatment on these things. And, and this is what they think is that, is that um, um, grade one and grade two injuries uh, should be treated, but that aspirin or heparin are probably equivalent based on you know, lower, level, lower levels of evidence, but, 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 but also their, their, their experience and, and, and what we see clinically. Um, and that a follow-up angiogram at about a week can sometimes change, you know, if they need to be anticoagulated, can, can change if the, uh, sometimes the, the injury goes away and it's not apparent anymore, or, or it worsens, becomes pseudoaneurysm, it needs to be more aggressively treated. So our guidelines in Greenville are we're at the bottom, kind of small print, but, but um, um, we typically will give aspirin for grade one, for grade two, either heparin or aspirin, depending on, the, on, on, on what the, 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 
neurosurgeons that treat this um, uh, uh, want to do, but can be converted to, or, or aspirin can be given so that we can intervene surgically if we need to. So in summary, uh, uh, looking at all these things, these are, I think, the take-home points. Early surgery is not associated with neurologic deterioration. Early surgery results in higher rate of neurologic recovery in patients with incomplete spinal cord injury. Recoverable uh, Asia A uh, injuries may be associated with lower uh, in injury severity score, compression burst fracture pattern, and cervical spine level of injury. And a majority of vertebral artery injuries can be effectively treated with aspirin that allows spine surgery intervention. So timing issues, and, 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 and Jens asked about this. So, so an older study, Kerwin, looked at uh, retrospectively at 361 patients who underwent surgery greater than or less than three days. And what they found was that, that, that patients' length of stay and, and for thoracic spine fractures with spinal cord injury had a lower incidence of pneumonia if they were treated less than three days, right? So this is a, it's a, it's a larger cohort of patients. But one of the problems that they found was uh, that the mortality in early surgery was higher. And, and this wasn't the, 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 the reason they did this paper, and this was almost, you know, an incidental finding for them, um, and their, and their p-value was greater than 0.05. So it wasn't significant, but it was a concern, say. But they went back a couple years later and re-looked at the same cohort of patients, and they stratified the patients into 48 hours, plus or minus, uh, uh, for, for surgery. And what they found was, at that hack point, Mortality was significantly higher in the early surgery group. So, and their conclusion was incomplete resuscitation of patients before surgery may have contributed to that result, although a retrospective study they didn't know. So what I would submit is that, is that that is true, and that what we see in orthopedic surgery and trauma surgery in general is that, is that if a patient's under-resuscitated, they do have worse outcomes, and so so it's not necessarily a timing of surgery. It's where they are, where are they, and what's more important is where are they on the resuscitation uh, pathway. And so so early appropriate care as opposed to early total care is, is is really the paradigm currently, with resuscitation goals of lactate less than four, pH greater than seven point two five, and base excess greater than minus five point five. Um, and when Weinberg at all in 2017 looked at this with uh, assessing for these complications, infection, sepsis, multi organ failure, P, DVT, pneumonia, and ARDS. What they found was that as the, as the parameters were achieved, so, so at three out of three were achieved, their, their patients with any complication went down <coughs> from 34.3% from down to 22% and patients without complications um, 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 increased um, all the way up to 90 to 77% uh, with 65%. So, so as you're able to treat these patients and physiologically address their injuries and, and get them to, to, to an acceptable medical status, their, their, their complication rate, their problems with having surgery uh, go down. And then lastly, traumatic brain injury uh, 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 needs to be uh, included as well, and, and, and these are all, old, you know, well-established concepts. But, 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 and, and, and for me as an orthopedic surgeon, I'm constantly talking with my neurosurgery uh, partners that are that are that are addressing the head injury. But, but, um, um, our guidelines and, and and what we we typically do in most places we do a serial CT scan if it's stable, doesn't change, and hemodynamics or and coagulation is stable, and their ICP and cerebral perfusion pressure is, 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 is controlled and normalized for 40 hours, Those, that's when they're safest to go to surgery for, for a definitive stabilization. So in summary of, of non-neurologic outcomes, early appropriate care with surgery less than 72 hours decreases the non-neurologic complications of respiratory failure and likely decreases other complications. Early surgery may be deleterious in under-resuscitated patients and patients with traumatic brain injuries should be radiographically stable, physiologically optimized, and with a normal ICP and cerebral perfusion pressure before surgery. Thanks. Great.